will win. Now, while this is happening, Todd will have called up the other two shooters. They would have already gotten their ammo blocks. They'll be back over here in the get ready area. And then they'll come up the next round and the next round. So when we get through, we'll have obviously, let's say there's 32 shooters, we're going to have 16 winners. There's no double or triple or excess. If you lose, you lose. You go on to another game. So we'll continue to do this until we find just one person who has not been defeated. And of course, that person wins the system. And a few other things. Any questions on the showdown at this point? Good. Well, I didn't give you much time, did I? Now let's go over here. No, let's go through the SAS range. We call this a SAS range because you're going to be shooting multiple guns, multiple targets, and the targets are kind of mixed up a little bit, as you can see. One shooter against the clock, like in SAS. You're going to come up, get your ammo, come over, come up, wait a minute. Load your, load your gun. When you load your gun, you're going to have your gun on the table here. Point it down, put your rounds in, take them out on the block. Now you're ready to go. You can shoot from the 45 degree stage position if you wish, or you can draw off your holster. If you draw off your holster, you're an ego guy because you're going to get beat probably. When you're ready, we have a little word for you to phrase a line for you to say. That's what they call in Hollywood. It. Your line is go for your gun. Now, now over here, remember, the range officer is going to say ready like we normally do. Over here, like in SAS, you're going to tell the range officer when he starts the time. So you are load it up. You've got five rounds. You can't put six, just like SAS rules. you got your five rounds. you got your gun staged. The only rule that we have here is don't put your trigger in the trigger guard. Because that sense say that's also a, a common sense rule. You can put your other hand, put your thumb on the hammer if you want to, put your hand, whatever you want to do, we don't care. The whole concept of this game is to get beyond the rules that we're all hampered with with the two pastoral associations. We've got rules and rules and rules, and they've developed over a 50-year period with people standing down here, one draw, one target, one shot, measured in thousands of a second. That's why this, the game is stymied. Can't go much further than this than to just measure things in thousands of a second. What we're attempting to do with this game is bring fast draw up to a higher level, at least a higher level in, in my view. And I think you'll agree with me after you shoot it. Now, when you say, go for your gun, the timer operator has a little blue pocket pro SAS timer somewhere. We've got one floating around here. And he will start the system. When he starts the system, you'll hear the beep, and then all the five targets will come on simultaneously. When the targets come on, you engage them in any order. Now, you really should be standing in the middle of the table, but if you want to stand over here or stand over there, it doesn't make any difference. Remember, we don't want these nonsense rules telling you can't do this because thousands of a second means nothing. Hitting the targets is what it's all about and being fast. Now, when the lights come on, you can engage the targets in any order. It doesn't make any difference. When you hit the target, the light goes out, move along, you're going to run out of ammo before you run out of targets because you only have five rounds in your gun and six targets. So you're going to have a staged table gun sitting over here. It's going to be a great western stainless stew. 
and we want everybody to use that gun. However, if you really are more familiar or feel better with using your own gun, there's another rule. Find using it. We don't care. We're just here trying to have a little fun while we shoot. So, you empty your gun, place your gun back down, pick up your second gun, finish off your targets. If you don't hit all of the targets, then obviously you're not going to have all the lights on. Off. But whatever you do, we have time on the timer, and that's the time that you're going to get. So you get one shot at it, you step back, let the next guy come up. Any questions on the SAS range? I'll wait a little while. Yes. If you have misses left after emptying both guns, what's the penalty on that? Or? Uh, yes. Good point. If you if you uh, shot all ten rounds and you still have a light lit, then obviously you probably have some kind of a score. But we're going to add three seconds to your score light that's still on. So that means this really is a accuracy game. I was just sitting there stopping. Any questions there? Yes. Does it record each individual target? Yes, it's a regular SAS time. All we're going to look at is the total time and either add penalty misses or not, just like you do a set. But if, if there's a problem, we can step back and look at the difference between the shots that we have to. Hopefully we will. You might add, if they fire that six shot and shut that off and they oh, fire yeah. another shot okay. and get that time. We, we, we have some F6 shooters here. F6 shoots a lot of these types of targets. With not only, they don't use single actions with 10 targets, they use automatics with 114 rounds in each pistol. So if you hit all six targets and you keep shooting, keep shooting, whatever, how many times, you're going to get that time. So when you get that last target, you better check and figure out that automatic. Any other questions? All right, the last slide. <coughs> We had a little problem with our system down on the end. I think we'll figure it out pretty soon. I've proven by switching things around that it's not the computer. We switched around and it's not the uh, cable. We kind of think it's Tom. He up was loaded up. We agree with you there. <laughs> so if things go bad or to worse, we'll talk to Tom. We'll get the guy with the mic. Now, once we get this thing fixed up down here, we're going to set the targets for a regular showdown. Our intention was to shoot the second range here, but since it did not work out like, we'll move it down there. Once we get it fixed up down here, we're going to spread these targets out a little bit farther apart. Now, in the meantime, you guys might be thinking about who you want on your team. You can choose up a team, could be boys or girls, whatever you wish. Choose out three guys that are going to be on your team. One of you is going to start off and be the sheriff. You guys are going to go out the street and you're going to face the bad guys, three bad guys down the street broad. Now the other team is going to have three guys on that side of the table as well. So you're going to have six shooters Two to six shooters, and then over here. You like that? All right, we're going to have six shooters shooting six shooters at six targets. That's the ten, isn't it? That's true. Yeah, all right. Blame it on Tom, too. Yeah. Hey, we missed Tom. All right, now, anyway, when you get over here at the showdown range with the team, you're going to have a little bit more room over here because. You need a little bit more elbow room. Your team's going to come up, you're going to load up. The other team's going to come up, they're going to load up. Now, when you do, you got three guys. The sheriff always stands in the middle. He's a good guy. And the other two guys are his deputies. They're two but they're not quite good yet. So when the, we put a little switch on the computer, we press the button, we say ready, we say set, 
we press the button, the center line will always come on. Just like in the movies, you're standing down the street, you know that the fastest guy, the bad guys, is going to go for his gun first, and we're going to let him do it because we know we're going to get him. So when the light comes on, the sheriff draws, bam, you hit your guy. That turns on the other two lights, and only when the lights come on, do the other two guys draw and hit their own target. Now, if you see that your buddy's having trouble hitting the target and you hit yours, you can help him out, just like you would in the streets of Broadway. You shoot two out of three, you rotate to the right, so this guy over here now becomes the sheriff. We do three out of five. Oh, there's one little part, I forgot to tell you. These guys have five rounds. Your deputies have five rounds. Sheriff only needs one. He's going to have one round in his jacket. So that means when the light comes on, Sheriff, you better be right on there. You got to be fast because that guy's fast too. You come out and you hit that target. If you miss the target, then the sheriff has to fall down to the dirt here and play dead. No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, what's going to happen, we've been shooting this a long time. This team thing is a lot of fun. In my view, I don't think we'll ever see a contest where you're actually shooting one team against another. And the reason is because all hell breaks loose. You get six people up here, they're all having a lot of fun. Next thing you know, the sheriff's going to have two shots in his gun. He goes, one in. Or the next thing you know, that uh, these guys are going to draw before the light comes on. Well, that's up to the... Up to you guys who work that out. You know, if you're the kind of guy that purposely jumps the gun and gives the edge, it's not what we can do about that. That's where we are. But if you want to try to follow the basic rules of the game, then that's okay too. So, if you jump the gun, tell your buddies, hey, I jumped the gun, they probably know it anyway. And then maybe they'll say, hey, let's shoot it over again. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Now, Tom, yes. No, no, it's showing that. The question is, do we have a 3X or a 2X? No, it's a 1X. That's it. One three out of five on regular showdown. I mean, two out of three on regular showdown. And if you lose, you lose. However, when you lose, come on over here to the sash range. You can shoot all day long here. Or even if you haven't lost over there. When you know you have a little time, come over and shoot on this guy over here. I forgot to tell you something about this. In the end of the day, whoever has the best sword on the sash range, he gets that system. Now, if he's the kind of guy that cheats a little bit, we may be giving him that <laughs> I got to talk about three guys right now. At the end of the day, whoever's left standing, he wins this system. Now we got another little thing over here I want to tell you about. That is this. All this is free, the ammo is free. However, a lot of guys is going to flow up, they'd like to get a little experience but to kind of limit it so we don't have a line going all the way down to here, we say, if you'll pay 10 bucks, run through it again. And if you get a better score, you now have a better score. So you can use your gun, use your personal gun the first time. Now if any of you fellows have a 38 or anything else, a 44 or whatever, all we have is 45 out. Well, we have four or five Great Western twos, Stavises that you can borrow. Or borrow from a buddy, whatever you wish to do. Now when you come up for your second try, you plug down your 10 bucks. 
if you want to, you could say, I want to use that Ruger. It's a, a new Vicarero stainless steel Ruger, 45 cold, four, four and three quarter barrel. Or you could use a Great Western two stainless, a new one donated by these two companies, so you guys have fun today. You can choose one of those guns instead of your own gun, if you wish. You pay 10 bucks, you get that chance. Now when you shoot, you're going to put your name in a drawing over there. And at the end of the day, we're going to go in the box and we're going to pull out a number, a name. And who's ever name, it doesn't make any difference where you ended up in the story. But you're going to win that gun. So if you want to invest 20 bucks and put your name in two boxes, then you have a chance at both of the guns. Now I'm sure some of these guys with more money than cents are going to say, I want to shoot five times. That's okay too. Just get in line. You know, when you come up here and you shoot, when you're through, I think you're in, your inclination is going to be, hey, I want to do this again right now while it's all fresh in the mirror. Well, that's okay as long as not other people waiting in line. But if other folks are waiting in line, you really should go back to the end of the line and work your way down. Any questions now? I just, I just had a couple of <clears throat> announcements. Any of you guys have got this profile in your... Anybody's interested in getting into this, I'm sure we can get you an application or information on it. Um, I don't know, I haven't talked to Bob, but uh, I think maybe if you, after it's over, if you sign a release, we might even let uh, give you a chance at it and let you see what you think of it. I'll have to ask the, the powers to be, but uh, uh, if you sign a release and everything and you're 21 years of age, um, we don't see want it to be. All right, Zach. Okay, we got Zach on the left and Fred on the right now. That's a couple of generations of Christmas there. I don't have Zach's profile here, but uh, he's about, oh, I think, 42 years old. And uh, his uncle's about 65 years old, I think. They, Fred, they didn't even put your name down here. Was they afraid, or your age, what was that? I guess they was afraid to put it down. Slow Freddy, they call him, Apache Junction. He's retired, shooting a colt. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, what other family member shoots? And he said, Brother Bob, what about it? <laughs> Bob, the guy up there that's standing running the clock. That sounds like Fred, doesn't it? The big push behind it. Brother his. Bob, what about it? He's getting this, uh, he built the show down, giving them away. I always ask Fred, what's he doing? And he says, none of your business. <laughs> He's what? He's also deaf, huh? <laughs> Reach up and slap him and then when you get ready to go. Ready. Set. Zach the winner. Hey Zach, we ain't gonna let you ride home with Fred tonight because you might not get there. Zach won that round. Good shooting, Zach. For a 42 year old midget, that's pretty good shooting. <laughs> Next up, we got Sergio James on deck. We have George Bruce, Frank Dean. You guys look at some animal. Must be, uh, His alias is Frankie Frank. He's a uh, state of Idaho, born in the state of hot, in the state of hot passion, I guess, that's what he said. Vocation, he's a wire twister, electrician in the regular sense. Crossbreed, Kiwanis. Make a gun a Ruger of 45. First round. All the lights are blinking. Barney and Tony Dupree are on deck. James Barney, Tony Dupree. Go get your ammo. George and George Rask took that one. George on the left. George shot that from way back in the 60s, and he, he quit for many, many years, and just got started back here last year or so. Just got started back, and then figured he was too slow, so he went in for a triple bypass. <laughs> I think they put something mechanically in it. Yeah, I think that's what they did. They dropped a can of black powder in his chest cavity. Yeah, <laughs> looks like George took that, well. that second round. I don't know what happened to that left side when I'm going to be ready to go. Alright, then we got Ken and James Bar Barney. Uh, looks like that round went to Henry on the left. Okay, we need Carlos on the left and George Narasaki on the right. Bob's uh, shooting the, what we call the SAS showdown event. You got five rounds in your gun in your holster, five rounds on the gun in the table with six targets. You can either draw the gun off the table, shoot your five shots, 
go to your gun in its holster, <clears throat> or you can do it in the reverse. Take the gun in the holster first, pick up the gun on the table and hit the six targets. You only have five rounds, so you must pick up the next target. All right, Tom, we got a unusual situation here. Two guys, best friends, and they are neck and neck. <laughs> now remember, George, you're staying at Francis' place. You want to have a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> Shooter's ready. Set. Wow, that was close. On the left. That was a good round. What did we get? On the left? On the left. All right, first round goes to... Francis on the left. Boy, I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to live between the difference in those two rounds. Well, George is general. Never time. Yeah, George tries to be a nice guy. George used to shoot back in the 60s. Got out of it for a while and came back, and uh, don't think he's lost much of his Are you ready? speed. Sir. Winner on the left. Unload, unload and clear. Thanks, George, for shooting that snake here. The first shot got a snake that was trying to get him. Good shoot, you guys. That uh, first round was James and out. Ken, you're up. I can't cut you no slack. <laughs> James and Ken. And James Barney and Ken. Dick Tree. Uh, James on the left. Usually when they call the first name, that guy's on the left and the other guy's on the right, the way we usually do it. 